so beautifully said. Thank you so much, Mr. Ramirez, for your impactful work. And now it is truly my unique honor to introduce to you a remarkable, accomplished woman, Her Excellency, the Right Honorable Julie Paget. She's the Governor General and Commander in Chief of Canada. Her Excellency Paget has been an astronaut, an engineer, scientific broadcaster, and a corporate director. Madame Paget worked as an astronaut and flew two missions in space. She served at NASA's Mission Control Center in Houston, Texas, and was chief astronaut for the Canadian Space Agency. She also served as a chief operating officer of the Montreal Science Center. Madame Paget has been a trailblazer, working to devise, implement public policies to promote science and technology. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming Her Excellency, the Right Honorable Julie Paget. Damas y caballeros, ladies and gentlemen, Mesdames et Messieurs, bonjour, bonsoir. I have been very privileged and I hope I bring here a message of hope, a hope for this extraordinary organization that you represent and that you support. I have been very privileged. I have been in space on two separate missions. And when you fly in space, you gain a perspective. Because as we orbit around the planet and a spaceship, we realize that there is one thing that we all share, every single one of us. We share a planet, the blue planet, planet Earth, a magnificent sight from space. And as we orbit, we also see that the planet has no borders, has no walls, has no differences. We all of us share it, and it's up to us to make it work together. And <laughs> but I was in space representing my country, Canada, aboard the International Space Station. As we speak, it's orbiting the Earth. It's been up there for 19 years with permanent presence of humans in lower Earth orbit. 19 years in which you don't see necessarily the space station in the front of every newspaper. Why? Even though the International Space Station is manned by people from Russia, the United States, Japan, the European Union and Canada. And if you recall, 75 years ago, these nations did not get along very well because 75 years ago, they were still fighting the Second World War. If you recall, some of these nations that are getting along in space as we speak 365 days a year, don't necessarily always see eye to eye on the ground. It's normal, it happens. That's why you're there, that's why the dialogue is important and that is why it is so important that diplomacy continues. The face to face, the finding of common grounds for the common interest of all our people. We need to continue this and I encourage you and the organization of the dialogue, it is absolutely paramount, more than ever in this world, that we try, always strive, to find ways to work together. And when we go to space, we get to see things, as I mentioned, with perspective. We see the Earth from a different perspective. We see our Western Hemisphere. We cross Canada from Victoria, British Columbia to St. John's, Newfoundland in nine minutes, going at 28,000 kilometers per hour, or for you, those of you who are still in that system, 17,500 miles per hour. We cross Brazil in less than six. 
we see the Andes mountain as we come up to the Pacific, and then this extraordinary tectonic plate, the Caribbean plate. Every single island is on the same plate. You are moving through the crust of this planet together. You have to work together. And as we see Trinidad and Tobago, yes, it's really, really, really close to Venezuela, to the coast of the northern tip of South America. It's right there. You see the difference because Trinidad and Tobago is an island, but you can't tell where Venezuela ends and where Brazil starts, because from space we see no borders. But we see the sun, just as we do, right here on the ground, the sun, le soleil, el sol. You know, our sun is a pretty cool little thing, yeah? It's, uh, it's a yellow dwarf in terms of astronomy. That means that uh, it's uh, within a sequence of not such a hot star and not so, such a bad star. It's an, or, it's an ordinary star. It, it's also a young star. It's 4.5 billion years old. But don't worry, it's got a promising future because it's got another five billion years uh, ahead. So we're okay for, for a little while. The star is full of energy, full of energy. That is why we have what we have here on Earth. It's called life. It's due to that star. It's a thermonuclear reactor and it is spurting charged particle all over the place, in all directions, all the time, day in and day out. Our sun is massive, huge. It makes 99.8% of the whole mass of the solar system. And it keeps in its gravity right there, tight. All eight planets, an asteroid belt, and all those dwarf planets of one of which, you know, beyond Neptune that is called Pluto, but is no longer a planet, sorry. And, all, and every single little comet and icy particle and whatever else is orbiting around the sun. And our sun, actually, I'm sorry to say, if you compare it to all the hundreds of billions of stars in the Milky Way, our galaxy, is actually a very ordinary star. It's an average star. It's not particularly bright, it's not a particularly hot, and it's not particularly big. Sorry. However, for us, the sun is a nothing but ordinary. Without its energy, there would be no light, there would be no seasons, there would be no life on this planet. It is important, omnipresent. It's with us day in, day out. It will always be there, certainly in our lifetime, promise. And it, is, it has inspired so many mythological stories and so many iconic expressions in popular culture. You all know Simba. You know Simba, that little Lion King thing? Yeah? He oversees a kingdom which is lit by the sun and the bad guys are all in darkness, you know, in those badlands. The sun is very important to us everywhere. We, do you know Tintin? Tintin? He's a reporter, yeah, and he, he, uh, he's had many great adventures since Hergé started writing about him. Tintin et le Temple du Soleil. He actually got himself in a really dire, straight situation, him and his friends, by predicting a solar eclipse. And if you've seen that uh, cult movie, 1977, uh, that planet Tatooine, where there's this uh, Luke guy that's looking out in the, uh, and he's looking at two suns, in planet Tatooine, Luke Skywalker. Well, you know, you know what? And you can tell that in your next uh, uh, cocktail because it's quite impressive is that most of the stars in the universe are binary. They have a companion. We actually are this time a little different because we, our sun is a loner. He's, it's by itself. And I can tell you that we in Canada, the people of Canada, we would love to have two sons because there are times, there are times when uh, like from November to April in our northernmost latitude where the sun sets and does not come back up until April. 
So two sons would be good because, you know, we could interchange the kind of thing. So we have a really special relationship with the son in Canada. We love the son. And we have a special son that we have a special relationship with. Le soleil du cirque. Le cirque du soleil. Like our son, Le Cirque du Soleil is young, with a promising future. It's got a long time to grow and to continue. Like our son, the Cirque du Soleil is full of energy. Like our son, the Cirque du Soleil is massive, and it's spurting talent and activity throughout the world. But that's where the comparison stops. The Cirque du Soleil is not well, I think they have hired Lilliputian people of smaller stature for, for their show Cortillo, but they're not yellow. They're not yellow dwarfs. And they do, are not at all average or ordinary. Omnipresent, they are indeed. It's a happy, sunny circus with exceptional creativity. It is an organization, an uh, entertainment powerhouse that started with a group of street entertainers and to this day defy gravity, provoke emotions, provoke a feeling in our senses and they are there to make a difference, they dare to dream. And tonight we are honoring this organization with a very special prize because among there's so many things that they do. They are empowering youth to develop their self-esteem and their resilience through art and creativity. And they are using the power, the enormous power of the creative force that we all share to help build a better world. Let's see what they do. Can we roll the video, please? Es un gran placer de presentar esta noche un premio muy especial. C'est avec grande fierté que ce soir je vous présente une reconnaissance hautement méritée. It is my honor to present to you the CEO of the Cirque du Soleil, Daniel Lamar, for the grand prize of grand citizenship. Monsieur Lamar. Mesdames et messieurs, bonsoir et bienvenue au Cirque du Soleil. This sentence is resonating tonight in probably 20, 25 different countries around the world. We are touring in 450 cities around the world. And I could go on forever and talk to you about the fact that we're a global brand. 
and the fact that we're very excited about what we do. And, and one day someone made me reflect. Doesn't happen to me that often. <laughs> so someone says, Danielle, what is the reason why you're so proud to work for Cirque du Soleil? And I didn't reflect that long. I immediately look to that person and say, the one reason why I'm so proud to work for Cirque du Soleil is not our commercial success. It's not the fact that we are a global brand. Yes, I'm proud of that. But it's not the first reason why I'm so proud of working for that organization. The reason why I'm so proud to work for Cirque du Soleil is our community involvement. Just imagine this story. 35 years ago, there was a bunch of street performers literally begging at the corner of the street, dreaming that one day they can travel around the world. A few days later, the same bunch of performers has created one of the most important entertainment company. And what are they doing? They have created Cirque du Monde. Cirque du Monde is to help youth at risk. And now, through Cirque du Monde, they're able to regain their self-esteem by doing circus art. And what do we do with Cirque du Monde? We push them to go back to school and we push them to have a normal life. And that's why I'm so proud to work for Cirque du Soleil. The, the other reason why I'm so excited to work with this, within this organization is a lot of people in today's world are talking about diversity. We don't talk at Cirque du Soleil about diversity. We are diversity. We have 49 different nationalities working in our organization. If you walk in the cafeteria of Cirque du Soleil, you will have the feeling that you are at United Nation. And that's the main reason of our success, because you have this Russian guy who finally goes out with this American woman, and you have this Chinese woman who's going out with this French-Canadian guy. And all of the sudden, they together put together the best shows in the world. And that's why we are relevant around the world. Can, can, can you hear the vibration here? It's the accent of a French Canadian. <laughs> What's so special about the accent of a French Canadian? It's Latino. <laughs> We're We're so close to you guys coming from South America and Caribbean because we speak the same language. We speak the language of heart. And that's why when I see the dialogue, when I see leadership about Americas, we, the Latino, are going to change Americas. And we are going to change the world moving forward. And that's why when my friend Ivan Chavez said you should accept this award, I never hesitated because I said to myself, we as Latino, because we speak with our heart, we're going to change the world. And that's why I'm so proud to be with you guys tonight because we share the same value. We share the value that people will have to think about more and more because in the world we are today, we need people like artists. Artists are sensitive people. Artists are people that sense what's going on in the world. And I always say to my business people, my marketing people, listen to the artists because they're the one that sense what's going to happen in the future. They're the one that are sensitive about environment. 
They're the ones that are sensitive about equality. They're the ones that are sensitive about diversity. And what's my meaning in life? Someone asked me one day, what's your meaning in life, Danielle? My meaning in life is very simple, is to provide jobs to artists. Because around the world, there are very few artists that can have a decent living by doing their passion. We at Cirque du Soleil provide over 3,000 jobs to artists that can go through their passion, have a decent life. I don't know what's your meaning in life, but I know what the dialogue and leadership in America's meaning is, and it's so profound. Thank you so much for what you're doing with your organization. This is amazing. I would like to suggest, in conclusion, that we're not coming from Colombia, we're not coming from Mexico, we're not coming from Montreal. We are, obviously, and we are proud of our country. And yes, you should be proud of Barbados, and I'm proud of Montreal. But at the end of the day, let me suggest, as my conclusion remark, that we are citizen of the world, and that's how we're going to change the world with the mentality of being citizen of the world. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Lemap. Very, very inspiring work and, and definitely impactful life. With this, we have come to an end of a memorable evening. And I want to thank and um, ask for a round of applause for all the people that were honored here tonight. So, <laughs> congratulations. You are truly inspiring for us, and, and we thank you for, for your leadership. I also want to say thank you to all our friends and sponsors, and most of all, I want to say thank you to all of you that were here with us today for being here and for sharing this celebration of leadership for the Americas. On behalf of the Gala Committee, of the board, and the staff at the Inter-American Dialogue, thank you. So now, please, you are welcome to proceed to the atrium to enjoy the sir and champagne and continue talking to each other. Muy buenas noches y muchas gracias. gracias.